Um, today we're visiting Ruxley Garden Centre, um, a very well organised uh, garden centre, everything for everybody here and uh, I don't bother sometimes with sowing the seeds, you know it's a lot of extra work, why not come down and get the young plants and then you could take them home and plant them out. And obviously something like these runner beans, just ready to go out, maybe another 10 days or something like that. But ideally in this situation, they're under cover at night, so they're not going to get any frost on them. Sometimes you find this stuff stuck outside, never brought in at night, and that's the way to do it. This is ideal conditions for them. Now these will be ready to go out in about a fortnight's time. Just gently take them out the pot, make sure it's moist before you actually plant them out. I mentioned some time ago, and I repeat again, that companion planting is very, very important, particularly with broad beans and runner beans. They suffer desperately from black fly. Black fly are on them before you've even planted them. So what you need to do is have a companion plant with it. This is a typical a nasturtium, you all know that. And that you plant in between the row where the beans are. The aphid comes down, he's distracted by the smell of the nasturtium, settles on the nasturtium, leaves the bean alone. One of the other things you can use is the ordinary tagetes. Again, it's got a very distinctive smell to it, and you find that the aphids get stuck on that, they don't go near the beans. These you plant out at the same time as you plant the beans out. Spread them around where you've planted your sticks and everything else, and hopefully you won't have any black fly this summer. We've now moved to the section with all the herbs. It's fascinating. Herbs are even more popular now than they ever used to be. Simply with all the garden, the cookery programs you get on television, they're always referring to herbs. The thing is, a lot of people plant them out of the allotment and then they've got to drive miles to pick the herbs they need straight away. The easy way to do it is in a container. And a container for this sort of, whether it be spearmint or whether it be the, um, the other, other types of mint, they need to be in a container. Put them in the open ground, they'll take over the allotment. So these are absolutely ideal, they ready to go out now. Once again, make sure they're well watered before you actually plant them out. And then, decent sized container, Johnny is number three is the ideal material. Make sure there's drainage in the bottom of the container. And then maybe one, two or three minutes in one. And then think of a selection of other herbs, whether it be sage, thyme, parsley, all of them in a nice container by the back door, just ready you to go out and add the seasoning to whatever you're cooking. When I was talking about a container to put these plants in, I suddenly look round and I think, possibly that's a little bit too big for the garden. I'm no different to anybody else when it comes to a garden centre. I'm just going to walk round. I'm just, I've got to have it. I want to buy it. But all I came here to do was to say, I'm not buying anything today. How many times have we said that? And just having a browse round, the delphinium here, great garden plant. But of course, who loves it more than you do? Mr. Slug. So when you plant these young plants out, make sure plenty of grit, edge, crust eggshell around the base. At least it'll give a plant the start. Another great garden plant, the commoner garden old pink. Uh, this dianthus is its correct name. I can remember as a kid, Mrs. Simpkins, Doris, wonderful. And then Dad used to get me to take the cuttings, just take a piece out of the plant like that. They call them pipes. As long as you've got the stem uh, tight to where the leaf nodes are, in a little bit of uh, uh, potting compost with some grit on the top, you've started your own nursery. A wonderful garden plant and keep coming and coming again. And then we just move down a bit. Another great garden plant, the Ericemium. This is a lovely plant called Bowles's Mauve. I've got a particular love for this. My dad used to help out Mr. Bowles at Middleton House, and this is one that he named himself, Bowles's Mauve. Great garden plant, doesn't mind a bit of semi-shade. Here, look here, the Epimedium. This is a brilliant plant for the shade. Look at the lovely dappling on the leaves. And shade is something we can't um, ignore if you've got trees in the garden. We want something, so this is a great plant for it. And then as I was walking down, I look over there to our geranium, the perennial geranium. Another shade, shade tolerant plant. Just spreads out over the ground, really does a good job. And then the heucheras, not total shade, partial shade, 
And look at the wonderful array of colours just in the leaves. Now to the tree and the shrub section. And people often think, oh, it's a bit late to plant them. Not if the plant has been grown in a container like this. The ideal time to get them out now, the weather's warmer, the ground's warmer. But the important thing is, first of all, to make sure it's well moist before you take it out that pot. And when you do take it out the pot, in the case of something like this, I expect the roots have been chasing themselves around there saying, come on, Dad, I want to get out in the open ground. So when you take it out, then spread. Just pull the roots apart. Yes, you may tear one or two, that's not going to do any harm. But you've given the plant a great chance to get established. Just plonk it straight into the ground, the roots are still doing that. And how often do you find after a few months the poor little plant's going backwards and not forwards? So spreading it out, a bit of good uh, um, a garden compost, a well-rotted manure, a bit of soil in there. And then as I said before, when you plant it, do that. And if you get that tip on the end and this doesn't move, you've done the job. What pleases me when you go to a good garden centre is they're giving advice to the public. None of us know everything. If you are, well, you're a fool. You want advice, you want help. So as you're busily selecting the plants, read the labels, they've gone to that trouble. We control, how to water, and so on and so forth. And also too, that when you've planted them, the mulching, vital. Two inches over and around the plant itself. That will retain the moisture in the very hot weather. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a joy to come to places where for nothing extra you're not only getting the advice, you're getting really good quality plants.